Hey guys, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial video outlining the basic introductions to site modeling in Vectorworks. Um, for landscape designers or architects using Vectorworks, the site model is basically one of the most important parts. Um, and learning how to make a site model is basically the, the first step to, um, to yeah, making a site model and, and basically designing and, and modeling in 3D. So what I'm going to do is use just this really simple example plan. Um, some of the information I've redacted for the client's sake. But essentially this is a site um, with a proposed residence to be, to be built onto it. Um, and what we're going to do is use these contours to generate the site model. Now there's, you know, countless ways that you could do this. Um, we're just using 2D plans at this point. Sometimes you may bring in uh, 3D reference data from the surveyor. Uh, but if you've just got this sort of most basic starting point, then you can use this to create your, um, your site model. So what you'll do is essentially just draw over these contours with the, the polyline tool. Uh, and you know, you don't need to be too exact. The, obviously the more exact you are, um, the more accurate the site will be. Um, I'm just going to give that no fill, but yeah, basically you can, you can even leave some contours out if you'd like. Um, and the site model, uh, sorry, the program will be able to generate the site model, um, all the same. So I might just quickly change that. All right. So yeah, just really basic, just sort of drawing over these contours. I'm not being too exact here. I'm not too worried about being perfect. Realistically, I should be doing this on its own layer, and I do have a few layers off to the side that I'll um I'll be using throughout the tutorial. But yeah, basically just drawing on your pulleys. And you can see here we're sort of going from 22 and a half meters or thereabouts um, down to about 18 meters. So just drawing these on, that'll do. So these are our, our polys that we've drawn. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually just select them. So I've got my polys selected here and I'm going to move them from the site plan layer to the contours working layer that I've made previously. So this is, these are the lines of the polys, so as you can see, here's the original site plan. And basically we've, we've now got these as, as 2D geometry. If I go into the flyover mode or shift C, uh, you can see that, you know, these are just 2D lines at this point. Um, for us to be able to make a site model out of them, we need to turn them into 3D geometry or convert them to 3D poly lines. So there are two ways to do that. You can uh, select them. You normally select all of them. Uh, go modify, convert, and convert to 3D polys just here. Or as you can see, it's Control Alt O on Windows, and I believe it's Option Command O on a Mac. Um, so if you do that, convert. It automatically groups them. If you have multiple lines selected and you convert them to 3D polys, it'll automatically group them. Often I just ungroup those straight away by right clicking and selecting ungroup, or I believe it's control U on the Windows computer or command U on a Mac. Um, now we've got these ungrouped, so these are all individual 3D polys. The thing, I'll actually go back a few steps here. If you select this this line, see how it's just a line and we have no opportunity to input any Z data or any height data into this into this line. If I was to go Control Alt and O or convert it to a 3D poly, you can see now I have the opportunity here to input Z Z data, Z data. And if I go to 3D and I select on this and I input some data, say two meters, you can see how that's now moved up or if I go 20 meters, you know, see it's moved up. So what I'll do is undo that, bring it back to just a simple 2D poly, select them all, and once again, use the shortcut or modify, convert, convert to 3D polys just here. Uh, it's grouped them as it does. I'll ungroup that, oops, my mistake. 
ungroup that with control U. So now we've got a group of 3D polys. We'll turn the plan view back on now. So these 3D polys, we want to give these Z information like height data relative to the contour height. So you can see this is the 18 meter contour. So we want to bring this to 18 meters. So if I put it in like that, you can see that that has now lifted up to where 18 meters is in the model. Um, same again, if we've got this one selected here, this 3D, you can see that's 18.5 contour. So I can now go 18.5, 18.5. I'll see if I can get it a little bit. See how that's higher? You can see this is starting to look like, well, you'll see, it'll, it'll begin to look like the, uh, the site model roughly or it's you can understand that it's the information that the site that the program will use to make the site model whoa one extra zero there don't want to go that high um so this would be 20. this one here is 25. so if you guys are sort of practicing this um for the first time i think it'd be really worthwhile whoops got a bit high on that 25.00. If you guys are trying this for the first time, I definitely recommend just getting a really basic survey, even just a 2D survey, and import it, um, import the PDF into your uh, program, and just play around with with making these models. It really is the best way to to make a start. Um, you know, practice makes perfect, and you do you do need to practice with these things. Uh, now, those are all of our contours, so you can see the slope that's occurring here, you know, there is a slope happening here and the program can read this information and use it to create the, the site model. So one thing you might notice is we can see that this is the boundary of our block, but this contour doesn't actually give us the height at the, the corner of the block here. So we may need to add that information in after the fact and I'll show you how to, you guys how to do that. But if we take these contours, what I normally will do is get these contours set, get them into 3D polys and, and have all this raw information here. And then I'll copy them onto a separate layer that is the site model layer. So that it's got its own layer. You're not gonna lose that raw data at all. You're not gonna lose those contours. And uh, I'll just paste them in place onto that layer. Um, to paste in place, it's Control, Alt and V. So if you copy something and then control alt V um, or option command V on a Mac, uh, it'll paste exactly where it's copied from. So you don't have to worry about making sure it, it lines up. So now that I've got this on my site model layer, I've got the raw information. I'll select them all. We go to, I'll go into 3D mode as well, actually. So we'll go landmark. You don't have to go into 3D mode, but I'll just sort of show it this way. You go landmark, create site model, site model from source data. So these 3D polys are the source data that the program is going to use to create the site model. So it'll bring up this information box. Uh, I'll explain some of this stuff after the fact and I'll explain some of it now. So major and minor contour interval is basically just saying what's the interval going to be to, to show contours. I think I'll just keep it as what it was on the original PDF. So 500 are the minor contours and every two minor contours is a major contour. Um, won't worry too much about the rest of this stuff just yet. I'll come back to it. Um, 2D display, pretty straightforward. What is it going to display in 2D? Uh, normally, we display only the existing um, site model information, so nothing that we've changed, because uh, we can change these site models. Um, and we'll just show it as 2D contour. You can see there's a few other options here. You can play around with those, but they're really not all that important. Uh, basic stuff about drawing the borders, showing the major contour, or labeling the major and minor contours. Um, but we'll just keep it as the major contour. And you can see here that there are flow arrows as well. So this will show the flow of water down the site, which can be interesting. Um, 3D display. So this is what it's going to be showing in 3D. This is a little bit more important. Um, we'll go with proposed only. So once you start editing the site model, you can apply the alterations to the site model to either the proposed site model or the existing site model that can get a little bit confusing I might cover that in a future video this is more so just to outline how to make the site model in general um, 
So yeah, we'll just sort of take that information and, and go with it. You can play around with these settings and sort of see what they do. And down here, this one is sort of important, is the graphic properties. So this will change basically all the, the graphic components of the site model if you want to play around and customize it a bit. So we'll go OK. And as you can see, it has made this site model. You can see where it's quite thin here. See how it's like, you know, the site model comes to a sharp point here. Whereas when we're back here, you've got, you know, a bit of depth you know, and it sort of looks a bit more solid and, and a bit easier to visualize. Whereas here we're getting some even graphical issues because it's so thin in that point. That is where if you go to site model settings, so clicking on site model settings will bring up this initial settings dialog box. If you go to general and the minimum elevation, that minimum elevation is this level here, this lowest point of the site model is the minimum elevation. So if we were to extend that lower, so we were to lower that number from 18 to say 17 meters, you can see this will thicken up and it'll just give it that little bit more. See that just makes it that little bit easier to use. Normally, like there's no real hard and fast rule to this. Normally I just have it a few meters below um, just to give it some presence. And essentially there you go, you've created your first site model. So it isn't that difficult to create the site model and working with the site model is definitely a can of worms and um, yeah you can you can go pretty deep into it uh, what I will do though quickly is just make a mention to you can see that this just 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 meets here at the corner of our of our block uh, what you can always do is double clicking into the site model and you select recreate from source data this will allow you to go back into the site model. This is just basically a little dialog box sort of warning you not to delete anything if you don't mean to. Um, so you can see that this is your contour information. This is the exact information that we had originally. And you can see how it's using that to map the site model. Uh, what you can do from here is delete some of that, alter it, you know, make changes to it. Um, but Anything that you've, any modifiers you've applied to the site model after that, they'll still be, be modified. But what I'll do is if we go into this site planning tool palette down here, there is a stake tool. This similar, instead of with these 3D polys, you can see that it's 3D information as a line. If we just want 3D information as a single point, that is what the stake tool is used for. So we can set an elevation up here for, let's say, 17490, 17490 and we can put it here at this reference point that the survey got give it a white background just so you can read it so there's our stake so now if I were to exit this source this recreate from source data and flip to 3d oh sorry let me just go back in here uh, the problem with this that you'll see is there is actually a crop around this site model. So the program will automatically create a crop. See this? It's an automatic crop that it will make. If we delete that now, exit this, you can see that it's now pushed out to this point. So it's brought the, the site model right out to there um, because we've given it that information and we've given it information to send the site model to. But that site model crop I will touch on quickly now. So I'm going to go to the site plan. So I've already got a layer where I've drawn up the boundary of the property. Um, I'll turn the survey off. So you can see that this is the boundary of the property. I'm going to copy this shape, go back onto our site model layer, select this site model, and then once again, go to here to this edit site model crop. This is basically where you go in and you can decide how to crop the site model. You can see after deleting the site model crop from the previous iteration, after I'd provided that new information and it's now stretched the site model out to there. It's generated its own new crop once more. If I now paste in place the, pro the property boundary, we can actually see we are missing a slight corner of the property there. So we may need to come back in and provide an additional um, stake point outside of there just to extend that crop. Uh, but if I delete this external crop, it'll now use this as the site model's crop. And when I exit it, you can see now we just have the property itself. Um, normally I like to have some context to the property, so I'll extend that 
um, crop just a little bit so we can get some surrounding um, areas. But if you're doing a residential project and you just want the the block itself, the property's block itself, then that's a great way of doing it. I will go into 3D though, I mean, sorry, 2D, bring back up the site plan. We can see here, you know, there's our, our site model, um, but it's just, just missing information there, which is quite annoying. But what we can do once again, and this is really just sort of showing reiterations and a bit of practice, we can once again go into recreate from source data, go OK, gives us the warning once again, um, zoom out, and now say we want to bring out to this point here, this is our, our additional survey information that we want to do, so we can grab our stake tool once again, 21420, 420, we can drop that there. So there's our stake. We'll exit. Once again, it hasn't moved out to there yet because it is still reading from our previous crop. So, oh, actually, appears to have filled in the gaps because, well, that actually makes sense because it's filled in that gap of information. Our crop is still there. You know, it's still got the crop. But now that it's got that additional information out beyond the point there, then it's able to fill in that little odd corner. Um, if we go into the site model crop again as well, and let's say we want to include, you know, say this front section to the, to the property, then we can just click here and we can simply just draw it in. So say we wanted the, the site model to extend beyond there. I just draw this shape quite rough, get it to there. I'll turn off this. PDF plan so you can see a bit better. So I've drawn this shape. This is where I want the site model to extend to. This is the existing crop and I'll just select those both and you can add surface. So add those into one shape. This is our new crop. We'll exit out and as you can see if I turn this back on we've now extended that site model out beyond there. So the site model can extend to wherever you want it depending on where the crop is and what source information you have. Um, and that's really just a key part of, of making a site model, being able to ensure that it's as big as the block itself. And um, yeah, it's just sort of a great way to, to begin. Now there's a lot you can do with site models. Um, you know, you can apply textures to them, uh, hardscape elements can impact them and you can modify them to make pads and, and um, you know, set elevations in certain ways. So I'll just quickly give an example. Uh, let's say we want to slab it 20 meters, like we want to, we want to create a basically a leveled height at 20 meters and we want it to I'll turn this PDF off. So we want it to go to about there. Um, sorry, my class was turned off there. Whenever you make a modifier, it'll go onto a class, but we can explain that later. But with that pad now, if I was to update the site model, uh, update, you can see how it's now, oop, don't want to do that. You can see how it's now altered that site. It's modified the site and created a leveled space. So I can cover this in more videos down the track, but this is really just a way to get a clear understanding of how to create site models. Um, and then once you've created them, the ways that you can modify them, it's basically endless. So um, yeah, I hope that was sort of useful to, to see how to create a site model. Uh, I definitely recommend practicing, the, practicing this um, with your own survey information. Um, and yeah, best of luck with it.